Hello Year 10, this is Mr. Shaban and today we're going to introduce our curriculum and then we're going to talk about the first part of Year 10 syllabus. I want you to know that uh, in IGCSE we have chemistry under a code which is called 0620. So 0620 is your code and that's what you're going to use to search for the material online. In the chemistry we're going to discuss uh, the syllabus within two years the first part or the majority is going to be taken within year 10 and the last part is going to be taken within year 11. When it comes to the exams, you are going to write exams within three papers, paper 2, paper 4, paper 6. In paper 2, it's an MCQ questions. This paper includes 40 MCQ with 40 marks and paper 4, it has like theoretical questions. It's out of 80 marks and paper 6 it's based on alternative to practical uh, practical based question and this is going to be out of 40 marks as well you are going to finish 60 percent of the chemistry syllabus within year 10 and the 40 percent will be kept for year 11. what i want you to do is to start from the scratch don't waste any time you can plan for your curriculum if you're going to start without getting a proper plan you're going to end up losing lots of time and you might get stressed because you're not only taking chemistry but you're taking another seven subjects so you need to have a proper plan for every single subject in order to get the grade that you want and that you're aiming for we're starting our curriculum with a unit called planet earth planet earth discuss more uh, information about the earth we're going to talk about the air pollution we're going to talk about the greenhouse gases effect we're going to talk about the acid rain we're going to talk about the water pollution and we're going to talk about how to treat the water we're going to talk about the different sources of energy we're going to talk about which one is clean and which one is not and how to use an alternative source of energy in order to produce uh, a green environment so we're starting today's lesson with the first cycle which is water cycle as you can see in the picture, water cycle has like few steps or few processes in which the water is going to cycle from the earth toward the atmosphere and then back from the atmosphere toward the earth. We're starting with the water on the earth. Water on the earth are going to change from liquid form into a gas form by the help of two different processes. The first one is taking place is called evaporation. The second one is called transpiration and transpiration is done by the help of plants once the water change from liquid to gases they are going to change back to liquid by the help of condensation when the temperature of the vapor reduces it changes back into water in a condensation process after a while after collecting a huge amount of water droplets in the sky then the water is going to go back toward the earth in the form of rain this process is what we call water cycle and water change between liquid up to gas and then going back to the earth in a cycle in a continuous cycle that's why we call it water cycle the second process that we're going to talk about is called the carbon cycle in the carbon cycle i'm going to show you a video where it's going to discuss the complete cycle within the earth for the carbon from the atmosphere uh, like as a gas uh, back to the earth and so on but before I start I want to discuss with you three important equations these equations are what you're going to use within this cycle in the video in order to understand how the carbon is cycling inside the earth the first equation is called photosynthesis photosynthesis is an important uh, process where it takes place inside the plant in order for the plant to make its own food Basically, carbon dioxide changed from a gas by the help of a water into food, which is called glucose, stored inside the plant, or it can be used for energy, along with oxygen as a byproduct. On the other hand, and the opposite process of photosynthesis is respiration. Respiration is the process that we undergo, along with other animal and plants, where we're going to burn the energy stored in the form of glucose by the help of oxygen, to get energy and to produce carbon dioxide and water the last equation that we're going to talk about is combustion combustion is a process where we burn 
uh, like fossil fuel in order to get energy and this process mainly discussing how we burn the fuel that contain carbon in the presence of oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. So these three processes are very important for you in order to understand the carbon cycle that's going to start right now. The carbon cycle. All elements and some compounds have their natural cycle in nature, for example the water cycle. Matter is cycled using energy, usually from the sun. And in this video we'll be considering the carbon cycle. We will see how photosynthesis and respiration help carbon to be cycled in nature, again using energy from the sun. And we will also see the part played by mankind when we use fossil fuels. First of all, the natural carbon cycle. Can you remember what the process is called where plants capture carbon and give off oxygen? Pause the video whilst you think. Did you remember that this process is called photosynthesis? The carbon is used to build up new plant material Animals eat the plants or other animals to build up their bodies. To obtain energy for all these living processes, plants and animals take in oxygen and rejoin it with the carbohydrates, so returning the carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Do you remember what this process is called? Pause the video. This process is called respiration. Now, let's put some details into this. As they grow, all living things have to build up large polymer molecules from small molecules. Protein, for example, to make your skin and muscles and other organs, comes from joining amino acids together. Cellulose and starch to make the leaves, flowers, trunks, roots and all parts of plants from joining sugars and DNA to make the genes which control living things from the bases and the sugar and phosphate. Plants can make these simple molecules from the carbon they capture from photosynthesis with added elements from the minerals they get from the soil. Animals, on the other hand, get their molecules ready-made when they eat plants or other animals, but first they have to break the food polymers back into the small molecules. Do you know what this process is called? Pause whilst you think of an answer. This is called digestion breaking the food into little bits so it can get into our blood. All of this, of course, needs lots of energy. And living things get their energy from respiration. Some of the monomers, things like sugar, have to be rejoined with oxygen. And for us, that is the principal use of the carbohydrates in our diet. The carbon dioxide gets back into the food web through photosynthesis. Now let's look at mankind's influence on the carbon cycle. Hundreds of millions of years ago, huge quantities of living things died and were trapped in layers of rock. These formed our fossil fuels of coal, oil and natural gas. Sometimes they were trapped in mud deposits that got compressed into shale. Tiny pockets of natural gas in these shales are now being exploited by fracturing the deep down rocks in a process called fracking. The carbon dioxide released during respiration is cycled naturally. The same is the case if we burn wood and agricultural waste, even biogas given off from food we throw into rubbish tips and from sewage works. All this carbon has been recently captured from the atmosphere and we are simply returning it to be used again in the natural cycle. However, when we burn fossil fuels, the carbon in them has been underground for hundreds of millions of years, and this adds new carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Just as we use 90% of our food as a fuel, and only 10% for building and repairing our bodies, so with fossil fuels, 90% are used as fuels and are combusted, and only 10% are used to make things such as plastic. If we burn household waste, 
including plastics. At least the oil has been used once or twice before it gets used as a fuel. Better still is to use the plastic as a resource for making new plastics by recycling. So there it is, the carbon cycle. Remember that carbon dioxide and oxygen dissolve in water, so there is a similar cycle that keeps life working in the oceans too. Matter cannot be created, so nature continually recycles. It's something that we are relearning to do. Then we're going to talk about the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen cycle includes a very important terms. The first one is called nitrogen fixation. The second one is called hopper process. Our atmosphere is made up of 78% nitrogen. We need the nitrogen for our DNA and for proteins. But we just can't breathe in the nitrogen like oxygen but we must absorb our nitrogen in our food. Nitrogen follows a cycle where it travels from the atmosphere to the soil to animals and back and in a cycle. Nitrogen in the atmosphere falls to the earth by precipitation such as rain or snow. Once in the soil it finds its way to bacteria on the root of, of plants. At the roots, the nitrogen is combined with hydrogen to make ammonia in a process called nitrogen fixation. Lightning in the atmosphere can also do this. Now ammonia is toxic, so additional bacteria combines this ammonia with oxygen in a process called nitrogenification. At this point, the nitrogen is in a form called nitrite. Additional nitrifying bacteria convert this nitrite to nitrate. At this point, plants can absorb this nitrogen in a process called assimilation. However, not all of the nitrate is absorbed, but some of it goes to the bacteria that release the nitrogen to the atmosphere in a process called denitrifying. The nitrogen returns to the atmosphere also, once in the animal, after it eats the plants, the animal either dies or needs to get rid of waste. Another type of bacteria then takes this and along with decomposers and breaks this nitrogen either in the waste or the dead animal. And by a process called ammonification, the nitrogen can enter the cycle once again at nitrification. And the cycle continues. I hope that helps with the nitrogen cycle, which is how nitrogen keeps recycling itself. I want to recap with you the Hopper process. Hopper process is the process of making the fertilizers. Hopper process is a chemical reaction which is man-made, where humans are taking the, nit the nitrogen from the air along with the hydrogen to react together to produce ammonia which is used for the plant as a fertilizer. Likely produced ammonia in the laboratory from the thermal decomposition of ammonium chloride or from the reaction of ammonium and hydroxide ions. Have you ever wondered how ammonia is produced on an industrial scale? In this lesson, we will learn about the Haber process to produce ammonia developed during World War I by Fritz Haber and Karl Bosch for their efforts and contributions to developing large-scale industrial processes they were awarded with Nobel Prizes in Chemistry. The Haber process is the industrial process for the manufacture of ammonia from hydrogen and nitrogen. Hydrogen is obtained from the reaction of methane and steam producing carbon monoxide as a byproduct. The hydrogen produced from this reaction also reacts with oxygen from air, producing water and leaving nitrogen behind. Recall that air is 77% nitrogen. These gases are then compressed and delivered to the reactor, where ammonia is produced. 
These gases are then cooled down and ammonia is liquefied, ready to be tapped off. Unused hydrogen and nitrogen are recycled back to the reactor. Let's revisit this reaction again. Note that this is a reversible reaction and that the forward reaction is exothermic. The Haber process uses Le Chatelier's principle to maximize ammonia production while keeping operating and production costs in mind. Le Chatelier's principle tells us that increasing pressure will favor the side with fewer moles. For our case, the production of ammonia. It would make sense to conduct the reaction at a very high pressure, but we must also remember that it is expensive to build and operate a plant that can withstand such high pressures. Therefore, a compromise pressure of 200 atmospheres is used. Let's keep Le Chatelier's principle in mind. What do you think is the best temperature conditions to maximize ammonia production? Please pause the video to think about this and resume once you are ready. Since the forward reaction is exothermic, it would make sense to conduct this reaction at a low temperature. The compromise temperature is 400 to 450 degrees Celsius, which is not exactly low, but not too high. If a low temperature were used, the rate of reaction would be very slow, though the exothermic reaction would be favored. It would actually take a long time for equilibrium to be reached, so a compromise temperature of 400 to 450 degrees Celsius ensures that the reaction proceeds with sufficient yield. The yield of this process is 10 to 20 percent. Remember from the introduction that unused gases are recycled, so no reactants are wasted. As well, an iron catalyst is used in this process. The presence of the catalyst does not affect the position of equilibrium, but increases the rate at which equilibrium is reached. In conclusion, the Haber process is the industrial process to produce ammonia from hydrogen and nitrogen. It is conducted at 400 to 450 degrees Celsius and at 200 atmospheres in the presence of an iron catalyst. These are compromised conditions in order to maximize ammonia production and economic profit. Okay, the last cycle of today's lesson is the oxygen cycle. Oxygen cycle is very simple and very easy. Oxygen will be cycling within the soil and the atmosphere by the help of two processes. The first one is called respiration, where the animal plants are using the oxygen along with glucose. They are taking it to change it into carbon dioxide and water vapor. And then the oxygen will be, or the carbon dioxide will be taken by the help of the plant to change it back into oxygen. So it's like an animal and a plant, each of them are found on one side and animal take the oxygen to change it into carbon dioxide, plant take the carbon dioxide to change it back into oxygen. It's so simple and you need to remember only the two important keywords for this cycle which is respiration and photosynthesis. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson and see you next time.